Hello, my name is Adam Novak. I'm going to have a quick look at the upcoming series focusing primarily on 3D printing with a specific focus on how to make money from the 3D environment and 3D printing. I'll be using this series to teach you everything I've learnt over the years as well as teach you all the mistakes to avoid so you don't get into any traps that I've come across. Here's an example of just one of my customers, a curtains manufacturer. You can see the prototype process taking place over time and the changes he has made. It is a lot quicker and cheaper than doing it manually or creating the resins and waiting for it to set and then using it. And it's very hard to make modifications if you use that process. By using a 3D printer you can quickly make adjustments and it is actually a very good money saving tool. Especially when you consider how much a die cast mould could cost to create. By prototyping and getting exact proportions before you send it over to a foreign source to create a die cast, it is very important to make sure those measurements are perfect because making modifications to a die cast is very expensive. It is also very quick to be able to register the designs because you can get them in your hand quicker. And the products are able to stay anonymous in the sense that it's hard to steal the functions of it because you're sending off exact measurements rather than describing what they're going to be used for. An obvious place to start would be how to get the most out of your 3D printer. We will look at differences in layer heights and how to place the objects in different locations to get the most out of the speed of your print and the cleanliness of it. These layers are very important to recognise because they also are the layers where the weaknesses are between the plastic and the breaking points which you have to be aware of. There can also be very big differences between the material to use such as this one being PLA, the blue one, and the black one being ABS plastic. The one we've seen printing at the start was actually a wood composite. Here we're actually seeing a PLA example of different overhang angles. We will investigate how different materials perform with overhang angles and under different stresses. And how positioning our objects on the bed can make a very big difference, especially in terms of the layer heights and the weaknesses. This can take over 20 kilos in compression strength, but applying a force to the layer heights, just here you can see it breaks very easily. These are 1.2 millimeter I-beams. We'll also investigate all the different functions of the 3D printer in terms of its capabilities of printing solids and different shells, etc, etc. In our first image at the top left here, we can see our differences in shells. Then we go through our different layer infills as it increases. And with those different infills, we investigate how many surface layers are required to cover it with different layer heights and with different infills so we don't have to waste extra material and we can get quicker prints. Here we can see different infill types from fun ones to actually having a functional performance difference and speed differences. And here's smaller infill being covered by only two layers on top because it has a much smaller infill. Here we can see differences in rafts applied on a perfect circle if we looked at it from above. And here we just got some examples of different support material. Generally, I actually like to input my own manual support material into the 3D environment so I can remove it easily. We also cover a lot of clips, threads and gears, moving parts, including mechanical and electric, when to use 3D printed parts and physical parts purchased, and turning and cool stuff such as turning linear motion into rotary motion and rotary motion into linear motion, as well as a 3D printed gearbox in the middle. We will continue our mechanisms exploration with different legs and walking robots such as the Jansen leg, clan leg. I avoided the Tokyo Institute one because I don't think there's actually available for free to use, although it's on Wikipedia. I didn't think I was able to recreate that. These are already available for free to download these mechanisms with a long description of how to use it down the bottom. I do suggest you scale all these objects available for download along the Z axis to make them a bit stronger. We will also cover very practical clips and switches as well as boats, drones and other really cool stuff we can do. These videos will come online within the next few days. Please be patient, I have not been able to create videos for the last 6 months and certain software which I like to use I no longer have purchased. I need to repurchase PowerPoint and other things which will cost many hundreds of dollars, though I will do it soon. And thank you for watching. As always, please subscribe or donate via Patreon.